Today's project's a bit different to the normal mechanical things that I'm doing, but I thought someone out there might be looking for a solution to this problem, and um, if I manage to solve this problem, then it will be this video. Um, I bought this in an architectural salvage place that we went to, um, and I liked it, it was quite cheap, I just thought it was nice. Um, no real reason, it's a telephone bell, a telephone repeater bell, um, and I said, I don't know why I want that, I just want it. And the wife said, well, could you make that work with the ring doorbell in your garage? And then you'd hear it better, because sometimes your phone's on silent. Well, that's actually a pretty good idea. This is pretty old. I can't remember where I found how old this probably is. But it is a, look on the back, a GPO number 1A. GPO being you know, General Post Office, I think. I'll uh, put a note underneath if it's not General Post Office. But they basically... Uh, were the post office they also were british telecom or bt they did all the telephone lines this is pretty old i think it's probably 40s um now i thought this would be quite simple until i found out that to make a bell ring like this i googled you have to have a very strange power supply of about 75 volts um and 25 hertz which i couldn't work out a way to easily create um you can do it with transformers and diodes and I'm not that clever. Um, so I googled and ebayed and I found something that will solve the problem. First thing you have to do is apparently replace this link, and they're clearly designed for this, with a 3.3k resistor, killer ohm resistor. I've got some of them. Um, and then you need something to generate that power. So I went on eBay and searched for ringing generator and got this. Now the company I bought this off uh, sold lots of telecoms equipment and I'm not entirely sure it wasn't BT themselves, you know, because it's in its original box It's a, uh, a ringing generator number 2A And uh, the picture was just of the actual item not in its box. I'm quite impressed It's come like this and the thing that made me wonder if it was maybe even BT themselves that sold this uh, BT being British Telecom back, back in the day. That's the really old logo Um it's because it came with this plug in the box that someone salvaged of something else. Just got PO on it for post office. So that's cut off another piece of old BT equipment somewhere. It's never been used. And it comes with its original manual. Published 1989. Uh, and it, it this is basically generates, here we go. This, this is your output, mains input, nice and easy. Output uh, is for high impedance ringing devices, and which is what that bell is by understanding. Um, and essentially, it's because you couldn't just plug a bell like that or multiple bells like that into the telephone line. There wasn't enough ringing voltage or current to ring them all. They wouldn't ring. So your phone wouldn't ring. So you'd need something like this to repeat that ring signal down the line. And it's got a bunch of connections, and they all look, basically it looks like it's an optional way you connect based on what equipment you're using to connect it to. The way I'm going to do it is I notice that it's got a DC auxiliary out of 16 volts. It's got a DC plus in and a common. Now, I've checked another diagram here, but my understanding is, and we'll see if this works, I can use the common and the plus out there, oh, I'm getting confused there, uh, to power something that will accept 16 volts and if that thing can return 16 volts as a switch to there it will activate the output and something that i think supports that is these diagrams there's one that showed oh no it is this one this mm, might be the other way around i got a bit confused there anyway yeah if i connect the the aux to the plus in Walks out, plus in, um, to something with a simple switch, it will activate it, and that's my plan. So what am I going to use as a switch? A Sonoff uh, SV, which is, they're called safe voltage, It'd make more sense if it said low voltage, but I, I guess I see what they're getting at. And these work between 5 and, I think it's 30 volts or something like that. They've got their own power uh, power supply on board that will take any of those voltages in 
on the I can't get the focus on the power in. It will rectify it to whatever it needs, and then when it switches on, that same voltage comes out of the out pins there. Um, I've already got one working on 12 volts in a generator, and I've actually geofenced a generator based off this, so the auto start doesn't work if I'm not there. This uh, is made by Sonoff, they have their own app. You can also flash these with loads of other firmware. If you don't like it, I'm just gonna use the one they've got, their app, it's fine. Um, something that these have got that I didn't realize they had built in, I thought I was gonna have to flash this, um, is they've got a timer. They've got what's called inching mode, and they're designed for garage door shutters and things. And inching mode means that you, when you switch it on, you then tell the software how many seconds you want that on to be for. So you, I've set it to, I've already set this up, it's already in my Wi-Fi, it's already set up. I've set it to three seconds. So when you turn it on, it comes on for three seconds and then goes off again. Um, and the thing with these is they can also be interfaced with Amazon's Alexa program. Um, and that's not, that program is not just for the voice control of the Alexa. You can use it to have routines. So when someone rings your doorbell, you can set up a routine which will then do something else and it will be to switch this on and then the, the hardware and software based on this will just run it for three seconds and then it will turn off again. Um, the Alexa software doesn't necessarily reset properly after that, it thinks it's left it on. So you just set another rule on there that you wait 10 seconds and switch it off. That off command will get sent but it won't actually do anything. Um, people will probably be horrified that know about these things that I'm using Alexa and routines because there are better programs out there. But it, it does for me, it's super simple. Um, and if I want to change it later, I will. Uh, right, so let's get on with working this out. First job, this. I need to check this actually works. So what I'm going to do is connect this to the mains, run two temporary wires out, and just bridge those connections in there and see if this rings, because this is completely pointless if this doesn't actually work. I'm hoping it does. Oh, I'll put the resistor in as well, because apparently you need it. Um, I think it will work. This is free. It's a bit gungy. I'll probably blow it out with an airline if it seems to work. Just get rid of the the, the gump. It looks like little bits of metal are stuck to the magnets and, and all sorts. But I mean, it is, if it is from the 40s, it's hardly surprising. Um, and there's a few other bits. The, the box doesn't shut properly. And um, it's missing a, a foot on the back, which is not really going to matter. First job, see if it actually works. So let's do that. So I have done some rudimentary rigging up here. Uh, what I've done is I've, I can't really see. The link across there, uh, a little open thing, so that swings out of the way. I've put my resistor in, you see it under there. It was really neat, and then when I did the screws up, it went all wonky. Run a temporary wire over to the output on here. Uh, it says bell output. Oh, the wire's come out. I'll push that back in. Um, and I've got my mains connected. Now I did just give this a quick go. It made a little noise and I couldn't work out why and I'll show you why, but it, it does kind of work. So these wires have come out, let's sort it out. I have got a proper tool to push these wires in. I'll just turn this off at the mains because there is exposed mains voltage in here. Turn that off so I don't accidentally die. Let's gently push those in. So they make contact and make sure that the ends aren't touching any of the components. Oh, rubbish. There we go. Turn that back on. This is one of the bits of wire that was in there. Just stripped the ends and turned it into a little contactor. And I got a bit confused with the, um, the inputs here when I was talking earlier. Uh, I mentioned the common, that's ridiculous. We've got DC plus and minus at 16 volts, and we have an aux for the DC. If you connect the plus to the aux, it should ring. That was what I was trying to describe. Hear that noise? I thought that was where this video was gonna end. Well, and then I thought, hold on, hold on. This is meant to be wall mounted, and I bet, it doesn't work if it's flat on a table because of this the, the way the ringer thing works 
So, plus an aux. Yay. There we go. Oh, it, hang on. Oh. You know, I didn't think that this would make it ring on and off. I thought this would just make it ring constantly. Oh, that makes the timer that I've put in that Wi-Fi module completely pointless. Is it doing it for me? I could just have, I could have just had Alexa do a 10 second on and it would ring on and off for 10 seconds. Oh, it doesn't matter. I still would have been the same module. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to straighten the case out. I think this hinge is bent. Straighten the case out, make sure that works. Then I'm going to screw both of these to a piece of wood and I'll wire them up and I'll show you how I wire them up as I go. Um, but I'll mount them on the wood um, and that'll mean that this will be a self-contained unit that I could actually move to, depending where I'm working and plug it in. But it will probably just have a hole in the top, a screw in my garage and it will just hang on a screw and then when the doorbell rings, hopefully this will ring. I'll get this connected up and then on the Wi-Fi module, my intention is to have it in here. What I'm thinking is if I essentially hot glue it to the inside of the lid, it should go in there without touching anything. It should just sit in there nicely. Then all the wiring's in the box and I wasn't very careful there, there's mains in there and I'm sticking my fingers in. It should sit in the box. And then the only two wires that will need to come out will come from this. All the rest of the wiring will be contained in there. And that will make it a really neat installation. It's a pre-drilled hole in the bottom uh, for the wiring output. And the holes in the bottom of this, what I'm going to do is probably swap them. This will go above that. The wires will run down the back and in. I will show you when I have a piece of wood and some wires. hinge is pretty bent and I'm not sure how best to straighten it. I might say there's screws out. I was hoping to just give it a little tap there. Get it to line up. Can you see how bent it is? Mm. Maybe if I squeeze that with some pliers, it must be loose as well. Probably the screws are loose in the wood. I think if I squeeze that gently with some pliers, that will straighten it out. Those of you horrified that I'm hitting an antique bell and all of that, that these are really common. Um, I looked on eBay, they're really not actually worth that much money. <laughs> I can't open it because the, the little screw is engaged. There we go. Is that better? If I can do the screw up and it stays closed, I'll be happy. Let's see if the screw lines up. It does. So that's, let's call that fixed. That is fine. And it's in such terrible condition, realistically, that a little mark, I just put in it with the pliers there and whatnot. It just doesn't matter. Let me look at the paint on the inside. Someone's thrown a whole load of nonsense on this in the past. I'm happy with that. It's going to sit up high anyway, you're never going to see it. I'm not using my workshop compressor here, I'm using the world's smallest compressor, it's an airbrush compressor, um, which only exists in my garage to run my car lift lock release. Listen to how quiet it is. It... 
It's a fridge compressor basically in a box. Um, and I just teed in this adapter for a PCL connection. Tiny little jobs like this. Um, and that can pump up a um, tyre inflator box that I've got that you then take and pump tyres up with. That's better. Just going to put a little rubber grommet on here to stop bugs deciding they live in this. Because that could short out the mains if bugs got in here. I'm not really that bothered about the other box. Uh, this has got some very convenient mounting screw holes built in. So I'll screw it on with those. And this, I found out that I didn't realise, cleared the gunge out of them. These feet actually got a hole right through and ready for the screws. So I just need to um, add something under that missing one to, to level it up. I found a couple of um, steel washers with foam backing on them. I'll put them together. They're just the right thickness to replace a foot. So I'll put that under there and then put this on top. That'll work. And it being raised up as well means these wires can just run straight down underneath and not get pinched when I screw this down. So before we do anything else, and start hot gluing this in. Let's test it. Um, so this has now got a 16 volt input from this, hopefully. Uh, I haven't even tested the output with the meter. That is awful, isn't it? And the output is just needs to be the positive because it's a return to there. Uh, and I broke that, pushing down too hard with the screwdriver, and I broke the plastic. But it shouldn't matter because it's still making contact with the metal. And honestly, if it causes a problem, I'll take that circuit board out, I'll desolder these, and I'll solder the wires straight to the board because this is never getting repurposed. This would have been in telephone equipment and you would have been connecting and disconnecting as this was needed. That's not happening anymore. I have also screwed this down. Uh, those washers are under that, sorry, like that one, uh, making it fit nicely. And let's just zoom out slightly here. I've run the wires underneath, I've run a wire in and connected it, runs underneath nicely and that comes up to here. It looks a lot cleaner in here now, I've blown it out and it's in the light, all that dust and scuzz and scunge is out. Um, so that's nice. So, moment of truth. Let's turn on the power, see if anything happens. Can confirm nothing has happened. Okay, why? Why, why, why? <sighs> Time to test the output. We have no volts in. No voltage. Hmm. Okay, more investigation required. So it did not work. I had the Wi-Fi switch connected, but wrongly. I changed the wires to the right way around, didn't work. The Wi-Fi switch didn't power up. I've tested the voltages on here. Although it says 16 volts out in the book that came with it, I was only getting 10 volts out. Now, I'm not sure if it's meant to actually give out 16 volts or if this is just an indication that it would work with a 16 volt system. I don't know, but when I connect, it only gets 10 volts and when I connect, the Wi-Fi switch to those 10 volts, it goes down to one volt. I traced out where I did find 16 volts on this circuit, connected it to a resistor and, and that pin just as a trial. It was 16 volts, I connected the Wi-Fi switch, it went down to five volts. So it just drags the voltage down. So I think there's nothing on here that can power that, even though the current drawer on that is tiny. So I need a new plan. I need a power supply in here that can power the switch and then the switch can short out the pins on here. So I've gone and found this really old Jabra. Remember them? They did hands-free kits. Uh, 5 volt, 180 milliamp. So that is useless for anything else. I'm going to open it with a technical hammer. Weighs nothing, so that shouldn't. it should be a circuit board-based power supply, not a transformer-based. I'm going to smash that out. Hopefully it will fit in here in the circuit with the circuit board. 
and it can power that. And then this needs some modification because the output's now gonna be separate to this. Uh, so the output of this needs to be a simple switched output, not output the voltage that goes in. And there's a way to modify these, which you can Google, which I've done. Effectively, you then use these pins, the plus and minus as your power in. You remove those two resistors, the tiny resistors. Let's see if I can point using something, a soldering iron. That resistor there and the other one there. Remove those, short those two out, and then we end up with those two becoming just a switched output unrelated to the power, the DC power going to this. And this could be run on, as it says, 5 to 24 volts. So it should run on the 5 volt output from that pretty naff looking power supply. Let's see if that works. Resilient, isn't it? Okay, there's the board. Let's see how big it is once we get it out. This is going to take a moment. We're looking good. Um, it's pretty small. Uh, I think if I just clip those wires out and clip this wire, we've got our ready made power supply. Let's try again. So, what have I done? I've connected the soldered these wires to the back of the mains in and it'll come straight out to the mains input of that uh, power supply that we broke out of the Jabra adapter and I soldered the wires to there because they weren't long enough. Power comes out of there, should be five volts and what I've done is I've actually removed, not only did I remove the um, resistors that you have to remove, I removed the pins that were there because I wasn't using them and I couldn't get to that resistor that was there. I've bridged that, I've soldered, I took the pins out and I soldered straight to the board there, power in, and then I've soldered two wires there. That should now be a switched output rather than the power that's coming in coming out. That is now that relay just connected across those two. And I've connected it onto there. This is more of a proof of concept layout because I am going to desolder these and solder straight to the board because I don't like these connections. So. Let's see if that works when I turn it on. All right, let's turn the switch. Let's see what happens. Oh, we have a light on the Sonoff SV module. That green light means it should be connected to my Wi-Fi. SV bell, I called it, because it's gonna be the bell. Uh, and it's, it's not greyed out, which means that it's connected. So. Okay. I heard it make a noise. I need to now get this upright. But now I know that it works. I'm going to put it upright, check it, and then I'm going to show, I'm going to glue all this in. I've stood it up. We've got our light on the Wi-Fi module, which means that it's got the Wi-Fi connection. So that bit's working. That's connected to there. Just do it upright. Here's the app. Let's give it a go. You saw that switch off after the amount of seconds I'd set. Although that's a little bit pointless now. I think I'd probably set it to 10 seconds or something because it actually rings properly. Well, that's excellent. Um, so the last job's then glue that and that to the cover uh, so that they sit on there but without touching anything and also desolder those put them in as you can see the screws are out the circuit board because that's i've had to look at the back to solder to it um, and, and one other problem the screw well, i've got the screws here that was in there it's difficult to show but actually the center of that's got a little can i even show you let's try and get you in there Got a hole in it, and this screw I think was meant to have a point on it at some point, and that was like a pivot. And over the years, it's worn down to nothing. And the one on the back seems to sit, seems to locate quite nicely into something at the back, which I 
I think is probably the other half of the pivot. And what I think I need to do is file this into a point again. Screw it in so it just, act, just touches and just acts as a little pivot for that and it'll ring better. So I've kind of made the screw a point. I actually put it in a drill and just spun it against a file. It's a bit of a point. I'm going to see if that works. Uh, sorry about the flickering. It's the lights in the garage, but that doesn't really do that. Um, I put the screws back in. I desoldered the connectors and I've soldered straight to the board. Um, and these are all the bits I took out. So I desoldered these. Desoldering pump. And those, there was the one that I broke. Uh, they're gone. I took the strain relief off of the uh, power adapter, power supply, because it was actually in the way. Uh, and I'm just warming up the hot glue gun to do that. The bolt that I filed the end down to a bit of a point now holds that really nicely. Much better. That is so much better than it was before. Uh, and we can now push the screw out of the way. In the uh, give that up. That's secured. Just need to hot glue this. That's those two things. Hot glue it on. There's a big ball or under each one, and then I put some just on the outside to keep it still. And then that will fit neatly on there. And that's the whole thing built. So you just put a hole in the top of the wood, and then hang it somewhere. There it is. Pretty simple. So a bit of wood. Uh, put a hole at the top so I can hang it off a screw wherever I decide to put it. And uh, it works pretty well. Just need to... There's my doorbell. Just a thought. Do we think this could be the only... Wi-Fi controlled 1940s telephone bell turned into a doorbell in the world? Probably. Who knows? And there it is installed in the corner of my garage. Um, all I did was put a bit of threaded rod through and just pressed it up there. So that can be taken down whenever I want and I haven't cut that off because I'm going to call that a handle. Because, yeah, why not? Yeah. And I had a spare plug on the so that's ideal. So there we go, there it is installed in the corner of the garage. Here's my doorbell. Pretty good that. Thanks for watching, really appreciate it. Um, I am new to YouTube and talking about what I'm doing as I work uh, is quite new to me, so I'm still getting used to that and reacting into it. Um, Put a comment below if you liked it, if you didn't like it, let me know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. Um, I will be doing more videos, uh, so subscribe and it will let you know when I upload the next one. I've got a few other projects that the videos have got to be uploaded for. Um, uh, press that like button below as well so I know which videos people actually liked and which ones they don't. Uh, have a great day and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.